The History of the Italian Language, Part 1 The Romance Languages Italian is a Romance language. Now, although some people might say Italian is the language of love, that is not why it is called a Romance language. It is because it comes from the language that the Romans spoke. The Romance languages are descended from Latin, the language of the Romans. The Roman Empire covered a vast area at its peak, and everywhere the Romans went they took their language, Latin, with them. After the fall of the Western Roman Empire in 476 AD, the colloquial Latin that people spoke had become quite different from the Latin of great writers such as Caesar or Cicero from the 1st century BC. People still wrote in classical Latin, but called the everyday language that they spoke the Vulgar Roman language or Romance. The colloquial language that these Roman citizens spoke started to develop regional differences, and these dialects of Romance gradually became recognised as different languages. Here are the largest Romance languages today. Italian, Romanian, French, Spanish, Portuguese. The Romance languages are still very similar, as can be seen from these common words. Panem. Pane. Poine. Pan. 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 Vinum. Vino. Vin. Va. Vino. Vigno. Here, appearing on the map, are some other Romance languages that you might have heard of. Some of them have thousands of speakers. Others are becoming endangered. The dialects of Italy are really different Romance languages that all develop independently from spoken Latin. Standard Italian comes from the dialect of Tuscany. There are lots of other Romance languages that you might not have heard of. In fact, the Romance languages form a continuum, so if you were to walk from Portugal through Spain and Catalonia into southern France and round into northern Italy, then down to Rome, listening to local people talk, the dialects would change gradually from village to village, even though the national languages are quite different. What about these areas? They were part of the Roman Empire, so why don't people speak Romance languages there? After the Arab conquest of the 7th and 8th centuries, Latin was replaced by Arabic in northern Africa as the language of administration, but the spoken language survived longer. When the Romans conquered Britain in 43 AD, the Celtic people they met spoke British, the ancestor of modern Welsh and Cornish. English didn't arrive until a few hundred years later when the Germanic Anglo-Saxons invaded. Latin didn't survive as a spoken language in Britain, but many words entered the British language, and Welsh still has a large number of words that derive from Latin. Here are a few examples. Cella. Cella. Kell. Ecclesia. Chiesa. Eglwys. Pontem. Ponte. Pont. Barba. Barba. Barv. Murum. Muro. Mir. Fenestra. Finestra. Fenest. One Romance language that only died out fairly recently is Dalmatian. It was spoken in Croatia and was similar to both Italian and Romanian. In 1897, Matteo Bartoli from Istria visited the last native speaker, Duone Udaina, and obtained a lot of information from him concerning the vocabulary, grammar and phonology of Dalmatian, as well as some stories in the language. Here is a summary showing how some of the Romance languages that are spoken today relate to each other. In this video we will see how Latin became Italian and look at the earliest examples of the Italian language. So what is the earliest example of the Italian language? The traditional date for the founding of Rome is April 21st, 753 BC and the earliest example of written Latin is an inscription on a brooch from the 7th century BC found near Rome. It says, Manius made me for Numerius. This is a very archaic form of the language and is called Old Latin. 
At this time, it was only the language of the area around Rome, called Latium, so we can't really call this the Italian language yet. The most famous Latin authors, such as Cicero and Caesar, come from the Classical Latin period, from 75 BC to the 3rd century AD. This type of Latin became the written standard and the form that later writers tried to emulate. As the Roman Empire increased in size, the Latin language was spread across most of Europe as the language of government, commerce and religion. Everyone wrote in the same way, but the way people spoke started to change in the various parts of the empire. We know a lot about how the Romans pronounced Latin because they liked writing about the grammar and pronunciation of their language. Here are some Latin words pronounced as Cicero probably pronounced them in the classical period, and then how later Romans might have said them. Not all these changes happened everywhere. Sardinian is a very conservative language, and the same words are pronounced much more like the Latin versions than the modern Italian ones are. Caelum. Caelu. Cielo. 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 Gelu. Fidem. Fide. Fede. Fede. Fide. Gula. Gola. Gola. Gula. Gupsum. Gipsu. Kissu. Gesso. 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 Gisu. Pantasma. Fantasma. Fantasma. Fantasima. Over time, various sounds changed, and at the end of the classical period, in about the 3rd century AD, the words would have been pronounced quite differently in the various Roman provinces. The pronunciation continued to change throughout the following centuries, but the words were still written in the same way, and people still thought of themselves as speaking Latin. It was only in the 8th or 9th centuries that people started to see classical Latin as a separate language, not just a more formal version of what they spoke. Here is a famous quote in Latin that Julius Caesar said when he won the Battle of Zela in 47 BC. The classical pronunciation is how it is believed Caesar himself would have pronounced the phrase Weni, Weedy, Weeki. Romans from later times would have pronounced it slightly differently. Veni, vidi, vici. Veni, vidi, vici. Gradually, the pronunciation changed, coming nearer and nearer to modern Italian. Veni, vidi, vinci. It wasn't just the pronunciation that changed, the language itself changed too. New ways to say things appeared and words acquired new meanings. Latin words had endings that told you who was doing what to whom, and it didn't matter what order the words were in, the endings always made the meaning clear. But as the pronunciation changed, and people tended not to pronounce final consonants, the word order became important to understand what people meant. Latin had a complex system of endings to show how words related to each other. For example, the word mule as the subject of the sentence, the mule sees the forest. The word mule as the object of the sentence. The man sees the mule. To show possession, the mule's apple, or the apple of the mule. To the mule. By mule or on the mule. And even when addressing a mule. People tended to simplify things over time. And because this form, the accusative, was often used for sentences such as I have a mule, or she saw a mule, he heard the mule, etc., People started to use this form all the time instead of the others. As the ending um became pronounced o, these three forms became indistinguishable. As a result, prepositions were used to make things clear. Latin did not have a definite or indefinite article. The, 
or a. So to say the monk sees a mule, you just said monk sees mule. But gradually, people started to use words such as ille, which meant that, and unus, that meant one. Without the final consonants, and with the change in pronunciation of the short vowel sounds, the sentence is starting to look more like modern Italian. Il monaco vede un mulo. Words changed too. These classical Latin words were replaced by more informal terms. The informal colloquial style of Latin is called vulgar Latin. That doesn't mean that it is rude, like our modern word vulgar. It means how the people spoke. Vulgar Latin developed and evolved over time, while the written classical Latin stayed more or less unchanged. The Veronese riddle is considered by some to be the earliest example of an Italian Romance language, but others consider it to be late Vulgar Latin. It dates from the 8th or 9th century and was scribbled on the side of a page of parchment. Here is what it would be in classical Latin, with the differences highlighted in red. And here is the modern Italian. It is thought to come from the area of Verona, as the words parar and versoro for driving and plough are still used in the dialects of the Veneto region today. And the answer to the riddle? The oxen are the scribe's fingers, the white meadows are the pages of a book, the white plough is the quill pen, and the black seed is the ink. The first example of what is definitely early Italian, and no longer a type of vulgar Latin, is a group of official documents from the 10th century regarding land disputes between Benedictine monasteries and a local landowner. These documents are called the Placiti Cassinesi. Latin was the official written language in Italy in the Middle Ages, but in court cases it was important to write down exactly what people said, and when people had to swear an oath, it had to be written in the local language, so normal people who had not received an education in Latin knew exactly what they were swearing. Here it is in modern Italian and an English translation. So che quelle terre, per quei confini, che qui sono contenuti, per trent'anni le possedette l'abbazia di San Benedetto. Italy is a very young country. Most of the peninsula was unified in 1861 with the creation of the Kingdom of Italy. The Papal States and Veneto were added later in 1870. Italian has not always been the language of the whole of Italy. It is only since the unification that Italian has become the national language. Before 1861, since medieval times, Italy was a collection of independent states, the largest being the Republic of Venice, the Papal States and the Kingdom of Naples and Sicily, called the Kingdom of the Two Sicilies. Each state had its own language, a Romance language descended from Latin. These languages are still spoken today and are called dialects in Italy, but they are not dialects of modern Italian, i.e. regional variants of modern Italian. Instead, they represent how Vulgar Latin developed in the various parts of the Italian peninsula and islands. It is only due to historical and political reasons that they have not become national languages. Here are some example sentences in the dialects from different parts of Italy. If we compare them with standard Italian, we can see that they are related, but are all very different. The sounds of Latin evolved differently in different parts of Italy. Latin had five vowels that could be pronounced short or long. This distinction was phonemic, and certain words in Latin could only be distinguished by the length of the vowel, such as os and os, venit, venit. Gradually, this distinction was lost and replaced by a stress accent as Latin became the Romance languages. In Sardinian, the vowel sounds remained the same, but without phonemic vowel length. In northern Italy, the short E became E, 
and the long e merged with the short i to give a. Short o became o, and long o merged with short u to give o. In Sicily and the dialects of southern Italy, the vowels merged differently to give five vowel sounds. A, e, i, o, u. These words illustrate the vowel changes. The vowel a has stayed the same apart from the distinction between long and short a. So Latin caput and pacem give capute and pace in sardo, capo, pace in northern Italian and Sicilian capu, paci. Latin centum becomes centu in Sardinian, but a more open e sound in cento and centu in northern Italy and Sicilian. Latin long e, as in arena, became short e in arena. The short i in Latin fidem has stayed the same in Sardinian and Sicilian fide, fidi, but has changed to an e in northern Italian fede. The long i has become a short i, so Latin insula has become isula or isola. The short o of Latin modus has remained the same in Sardinian modu, but become more open in northern Italian and Sicilian, modo and modu. The long o has merely lost its length. The short u of Latin bucca has remained unchanged in Sardinian bucca and Sicilian vucca, but become a short o in Italian bocca. And the long u has just lost its length. The consonants of Latin also developed differently in different parts of Italy. Latin PL and CL in plus and clamare have only remained in Frulian and some dialects of Sardinian. And Latin C before an I or an E has remained hard in Sardinian only. It has become palatalized in all other Italian dialects, as it has in the other Romance languages too. Consonant clusters such as CT in Latin octo were simplified, becoming, for example, otto in Standard Italian. Final Latin M disappeared in Late Latin and has not survived in any Romance language, although traces of it survive in a few monosyllabic words such as quien in Spanish from Latin chem. So, the Italian dialects all derive from Latin. They are not regional variants of Standard Italian. Sardinian has its own branch, as it is a very conservative Romance language, preserving many features of Latin grammar and phonology. The northern dialects of Italy, and sometimes Venetian, are grouped together as the gallo italic languages, and share many features with the languages of France. The Ritu Romance languages are another group of languages spoken in northern Italy and Switzerland. The Italo-Dalmatian languages are the dialects of central Italy, and also some languages spoken or once spoken in Croatia. Here are the Italo-Dalmatian languages. Modern Standard Italian comes from the Tuscan dialect of Florence. But how and why did this dialect become the standard national language of the whole of Italy? In the Middle Ages, people normally wrote in Latin, but spoke vulgar or colloquial languages that didn't have a standardized grammar or spelling. These developing Romance languages were still viewed as vulgar Latin, colloquial versions of the written language. This written standard, however, had remained essentially the same as classical Latin from the time of Cicero, and by now had to be learnt in school as it differed greatly from the spoken idioms. In the 13th century, poets in Italy started to write in various spoken Romance languages such as Occitan, the language of southern France made famous by the troubadours, and also the Sicilian language. At the beginning of the 14th century, Dante Alighieri wrote in Latin De vulgari eloquentia, or as he might have pronounced it, De vulgari eloquentia, in which he discussed using the vulgar tongues as a written medium. He describes them as more noble than the artificial Latin, as they are acquired naturally and subject to change over time. Dante discusses the merits of the dialects of Italy, but says that only Sicilian and Tuscan are suited to writing. He also chastised the Italians for using Occitan to write poetry rather than their own Italian languages. Dante then produced his most famous and influential work, the Divine Comedy, La Divina Commedia, which he wrote in his own vulgar tongue, the Tuscan dialect of Florence. 
Other writers, such as Petrarca and Boccaccio, also wrote in the dialect of Florence. Over the following centuries, the debate concerning what should be used as a literary standard instead of Latin continued. In the 16th century, Pietro Bembo proposed the use of the Florentine Tuscan dialect as a literary standard. When the Kingdom of Italy was proclaimed in 1861, a national language was needed. However, only a small percentage of the population, 10%, spoke the Florentine Tuscan dialect. Even the first king of the new Kingdom of Italy, Vittorio Emanuele II, preferred to use his native Piemontese rather than the national Italian language. In 1868, Alessandro Manzoni wrote the first novel in Italian, I Promessi Sposi, and this helped create the literary standard for Italy. The modern dialect of Florence is still the closest grammatically to standard Italian. A phrase supposed to sum up what the most elegant use of Italian should be is lingua toscana in bocca romana. This means the language of Tuscany as pronounced by Romans, rather than as pronounced by Tuscans, as the pronunciation of certain letters in the Tuscan dialect has changed a bit since the days of Dante. So in summary, the Italian language derives from a form of the Tuscan language as spoken in Florence in about 1300 and used by writers such as Dante. People have written using other Italian languages over the centuries, such as Sicilian, but not in a standardised form. The Italian language has been influenced by various other languages of Italy over the years and is now spoken by the majority of the population. The other languages of Italy, derived from Latin, are often called Italian dialects. It is important to understand that they are not regional variations of standard Italian, so are not dialects of Italian, they are dialects of vulgar Latin that develop independently in different parts of Italy. Thank you for watching the history of the Italian language. Thank you.